And uh, then we'll talk about this. Uh, someone want to wave and volunteer to say our opening prayer? Okay, Brittany, thank you. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this day. We thank thee that we're able to meet here this morning and to learn, learn more about thee. We're grateful for the atonement of Jesus Christ. And we ask thee to bless our prophet and the missionaries around this world. And we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to start with a quote for you today. President Irene, that over President Irene said to ask and to answer questions is at the heart of all learning and all teaching. Love that. Now, there is a brand new handbook. Uh, did you guys, uh, were you able to watch uh, Elder Uchtdorf uh, do his little... Uh, zoom or not zoom broadcast uh, a couple weeks ago and he introduced a brand new handbook which is available now online let me show one little section to you that i really like it is let me put this up here Can you see my screen? Someone has to wave to, or tell me. Can you? Yeah, right there. Okay, it's uh, there is a it's called teaching in the Savior's way for all who teach in the home and in the church. I'm just going down to invite diligent learning. It's part two. There's three parts to this handbook, and inside of part two, uh, under invite diligent learning, I scrolled down a little bit just to this quote right here. But I'm going to read the whole paragraph because I really, really, really like it. It might seem easier to just tell learners all the things you think that they should know. However, Elder David A. Bednar counseled, our intent ought not to be, what do I tell them? Instead, the questions to ask ourselves are, what can I invite them to do? And then the highlighted part, what inspired questions can I ask that, if they are willing to respond, will begin to invite the Holy Ghost into their lives? Love that quote. Again, that's in the handbook. You can go straight there and pull that quote out and or that section on there. So we're going to talk about questions today. Every year, I always have a teacher tell me, oh, I ask questions and nobody answers the questions. We just sit there in silence. And I'm like, you mean teenagers don't want to talk? And they're like, yes, they never want to talk. I would propose that most teenagers love talking, love sharing. In fact, we have TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat, and a variety of other social media resources that would prove my point. They love sharing. So if they're not sharing, we're probably not asking the right questions or we haven't created the environment where they feel comfortable sharing. Now we did something on environment last week. So today we're gonna go straight into the questions portion. I'm gonna share something with you and I'm gonna share it in two ways. One, I'm gonna put it on my screen and two, I'm going to attempt to put the actual document in the chat that you can actually print. Oh gosh. Okay. Okay, in the chat, I put a PDF of a document that I created. Yeah. I'm also gonna put it here on the screen. And if anyone's watching this recording and you want it later, ask your coordinator to contact me and I will send it to all of the coordinators. They have access to it already, but they might not know that. Okay, so you can see my screen now, right? Someone give me thumbs up that you can see my screen okay? Excellent. What I've done here, I created this document from the old handbook that is really, really helpful. I've divided types of questions into four categories. 
the searching questions, which is where we're looking for information. It's a great way to start is, hey, who's talking in verse seven? Uh, what is the object that Nephi is building in verse five? Those are simple searching questions. There's usually a correct answer, and it's usually obvious by looking in the scriptures. But that's not the type of question that Elder Bednar is talking about, right? But they are important questions to get started. But then there's the analyzed questions. That's where we're thinking about the meaning. And usually in this, there's not a right or wrong answer. It's students are using their, their minds to analyze situations. I put, a, why do you think dot, dot, dot? Or what difference do you see? Or how is it that dot, dot, dot? We also have inviting questions. These are where we incite testimony and feelings. Like, when have you felt the truth of the law of tithing? Or when have you seen others receive the blessings from the temple endowment? Or how is your life different now that you've been baptized and are keeping sacred covenants? Those are invitation questions. People share testimonies. Those are powerful in classes. And then there's the application ones. In other words, incorporating doctrines or principles into our lives. What will I do because of this lesson or class, right? What changes will I make in my life? How can I live this principle in my life? So what I want to do for a moment here is just practice a little bit with these four questions. Now, I've asked a few of you who got on early to find a question that the Savior asked. So in the New Testament, and you all can do this, those of you who are watching the recording later, uh, it'd be great. Uh, open up your New Testament and just look and review the types of questions, what the questions were, and what the response was from the questions that the Savior asked, because he's the master teacher. So can I have someone share um, who found a question in the New Testament that the Savior asked? Who can share one? I'm looking for hands, but I don't see everyone on my screen at the same time. So Sally, where are you at? And uh, what was the question? Okay. And I'm sure others thought about this too. In Matthew 16, 14, 13 and 14, when Jesus asked his disciples, whom do men say that I, the son of man am? And then he goes on to say, but whom say ye that I am? Okay. Those are two fabulous questions. Now I'm going to share my screen again. Sally, just for a moment here, put you on the spot. The mm -hmm. first question, read the first question again. Okay. Whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? Okay. Look at that. And do you think that's a search question, an analyze question, an invite question, or an apply question? Mm. Someone want to help her out? What do you think? Okay. Probably, I would think analyze. Yeah, I think so too. It might, it could be a search question. It could yeah. be an analyzed question. Really categorizing it isn't necessarily the most vital thing here. The but search that, question would be who's speaking. Yeah, you could do that. Or like, what's the question the savior asked in that verse, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that would be the search question, right? But he's getting them to search. And there kind of is a right answer. It's like, okay, what have you heard? What are other people saying? Who am I? But the second question is the real question. The first question is just to lead up to the question. Okay, Sally, can you read the second question again? He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Okay, now what type of question is that? I would think invite. Yeah, there's definitely an invitation, mm -hmm. right? It could be an analyzed question too. Again, don't get so caught up that you can't put one in the other, but he wants them to analyze who the savior is and then invite them to share, who am I? And in this case, Peter gives a fantastic answer. So that's that's a great one. I, I love that. That's a great question. Somebody else have a different question that the Savior came up with? Okay. Oh, Joy, I see your hand waving. Go ahead, Joy. <clears throat> yes, I just thought of... I don't have the reference, but the, when the Savior asks, what manner of men ought ye to be? 
Oh, love that. So let's again put my chart back up here. Why is that an effective question? Where does it fit on this category? And what, what's the result of that question? I think that's an analyzed question and it causes them to look into themselves and to think, what is Christ asking me personally? What kind of man am I supposed to be? So I, I love that. Personal introspection. Yeah. That's great. Anyone else want to add to that or share something uh, on that one? Love that. Someone else have a different question from the, uh, the Savior? Uh, Diana? This is from Luke 7, and, he's, and it's uh, the end of verse 42. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? And this is that he's doing it, several parables in this. And it's um, when they find John the Baptist. There's some questions about John the Baptist, but uh, the verse before um, he asked this question, he said, there were there was a certain creditor which had two debtors, the one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? I love it. So there's the little context. We understand where the story is coming from. So, Diana, look at this. What is Jesus really trying to get them to do? He's trying to love other people. He's trying to tell them to. Uh, treat other people in a certain way to love them totally and here's one of the challenges with teaching um, a simple question has far more impact in teaching than you telling the students what you want them to know all day long diana is there is, uh, amongst all of your examples is the same i mean he told a little story right a little parable but his question is causing him to think and to analyze far deeper than if you said, I want you guys to love everybody. I mean, that's why the scriptures are told in story format, right? I mean, except with a few exceptions in the Doctrine and Covenants, the New Testament, the Old Testament, the Pearl of Great Price, uh, the Book of Mormon, it's all stories. It's life examples. So the the power comes when we analyze the stories. Go ahead, Leah. You know, my, my mind went a different way there. Um, we don't know. We don't know anything about the debtors. And we don't know. We don't know if the one that was in debt, 500 pence. We don't know if that was because of one bad transaction. And we don't know if the one that was in debt 50, it was a lifetime of hard work and failure over and over and over. The size of the number of the debt is not the story at all. Correct. The, so the whole point here is it's not the debtor or the creditor who's even in the story, right? They're figurative people. The real the, lesson here is for whoever Jesus is talking to. Right. And it's not, and I guess what I'm saying is, you know, you, you, we have these kids in our classes that range from age, what, 14 to 18? Well, 30, if you count institute teachers here, yes. Right. And, uh, and, you know, a, a 14 year old could have, I don't know, t told his parents they, that they were going to a movie and they went somewhere else and they feel like they've just done the worst thing in the whole wide world. And, I mean, you know, that, and that could be to him 500, but to the next person, they've done something in their mind that's so much worse. And, and I guess what I'm saying here is the, the principle is, is that the forgiveness, the forgiveness is the same regardless. Sure. Let's, the, take, let's change topics here. And then I want you to see what the real principle is for this discussion, because that's principle for that question. I'll share one. This is Luke. You know the story. Jesus heals 10 lepers. One came back and fell on his face. Jesus asked two questions. Can you remember what they are? 
the first one. Were there not 10 cleansed? Now, that question has a clear answer. And everyone there knows the answer to that question, right? It's more of a rhetorical question, but it gets people thinking. And then he asked the second questions. But where are the nine? No, there is an actual answer to that question. But Jesus really doesn't want to know where they're at. He just wants to know, well, let's restate this. What is Jesus really trying to teach with that question? Someone want to share? What do you think he's really trying to teach? With that well, it, it, it isn't where are they? It's why aren't they here? Yes. But again, what's he really trying to teach? Gratitude. Where, where, yeah, where's the gratitude from all these other nine? Okay, so here is a valuable lesson on gratitude. Now, he could sit there and lecture all day long about the value of showing gratitude. But instead of lecturing, all he did was ask the question, were there not 10? Where are the nine? And nobody has to say anything. Because inside, everyone's realizing there's a lesson on gratitude here. Without even a sermon. In fact, I would propose most of your powerful moments in class are after a powerful question's been asked and nobody answers because they're all thinking about it. It, it makes me think of, of Christ's interchange with Peter. This is a one-on-one -on -one con conversation, almost a priesthood interview. And he says, do you love me? And asks it three times. Because Peter is going through this process of, you know, he gives a superficial answer and then he thinks about it a little more and he gives a little deeper answer and he thinks about it a little more and he gives it a little deeper answer that Christ is get, trying to get him to be motivated by this feeling he has for him. Love it. Love it. Okay, so I'm going to ask a question now. What have you learned about asking questions? today for me you've reinforced something that i try to work with which is don't not to ask questions that are tell me what i'm thinking Love so that. so instead of what are the steps of repentance to say here are the steps of repentance which of these do you think is the most challenging Love it, because there's not a right answer. It could be different for everyone. Joy, I saw your hand up. Tell me something you've learned about questioning today. I think one important thing to remember is not be afraid of the silence after you ask a question, because it gives them that space to be thinking. And they all feel a little bit of that pressure when there's a lot of silence. And I think that also causes them to think a little bit more. I love it. Thaley put the same thing in the, in the chat there, which I think... It's powerful. Don't be afraid of that. And may I add one thing is there's a power that once they have a chance to think, to share what they're thinking, and that can be done verbally or it can be done in a journal. Maybe you write a question on the board and say, well, I want you to ponder this question for two minutes and then write about it in your journal and just let them write. And then after they've written, they might have a little bit more comfort saying, can a couple of you share what you wrote? And most of them won't read what they wrote. They'll just tell you about what they wrote. Love it. Uh, let's see. Sister Watkins, not all questions need a verbal answer. Yep. Love it. Somebody else, what did you learn about asking questions today? Um, Go ahead, Brittany. Well, I don't know if I'm going to explain this right, so you may have to help me out. But maybe asking as to where the spirit can expound to them and prompt them to do what they need to learn from it. And so it's an individual answer to them 
from the spirit about what they need to change in their life or what they, maybe it's a question that they've been wondering and pondering. Does that make sense? Yeah, Brittany, that was really good. Everyone's going to learn something different. So Brittany, here's my question to you. And I'd like to hear anyone answer, not just you. How do you prepare a lesson for that when you don't even know what they need to learn? I, I think you have to, I think you just have to be close to the spirit and, you know, everyone's individual, but I think you have to be working close with the spirit on that one. Uh-huh. Going to follow it. Also, All right, that's the wrong answer. Interesting. Go ahead, Diane. Also, um, one of the things I do is or one of the, from the very beginning, I put in their head, as you're reading today's scripture block, what scripture, scriptures, are the most important to you? Just ask them that question. Yep. Which one stood out to you? And then, then the next question is, you know, why? Okay, so I'm, I'm back to the same question then. What does that mean for your preparation? Well, okay, my preparation is a little different than a lot of people's because it is online. Yeah, maybe the presentation certain, might be a little different, but the preparation is the same. Preparation is pretty much the same. So one of the things I do is also, which one's the most important for me? And, and I, I've been using the, um, okay, forgot what the, those questions that you gave us last year to, um, to, you know, the words of Christ come unto me questions and so um it's like how does that i need to be able to answer the same question but for me and um share that be able to share that with them but also let them share and then then i ask them to come back the next day um in the discussion board online and and respond to some you know respond to some other to a classmate great love it so again the preparation you all should know and read and study your scriptures that's really your preparation because there's no physical way that you could know what students are going to respond to or answer or whatever nor can you know everything about them but you can prepare yourself and then here's my bold statement for the day a few very good questions will carry a class 45, 50 minutes. Again, how you present the questions, you can have a little variety with that. Write them on the board, write them on a little piece of paper, write them on a sheet, have them pass it around. Hey, will you read and ask some start? I'm going to put this back on the screen here and maybe I'll leave it on here at the end because some of you like want to screenshot it and I'll put it back in the the chat again. Again, preparing a few questions can go a long ways in helping your class. So let's use this week's Come Follow Me. We'll just do a brief example and then we'll end with this. This week's Come Follow Me lesson. Everyone turn there, please. Open up your scriptures. If you don't know where it's at, well, we're on Tuesday. We're on day two. It's 1 Kings. This week, there's only three chapters in it. 17, 18, and 19. You could have some generic. I saw Sister Lowe put in there like, feast questions like, hey, I want to feast on my scripture. Some very generic questions like, hey, what are the doctrines or principles taught? Uh, as Diana mentioned, what lesson is most important to you? Those are very generic questions that you, you, you could use on any scripture block. Or you could get start with that, and then you could do some more specific. For example, in this case, we know that Elijah seals the heavens. We know an effective lesson preparation would say, I want to know who Elijah is and why he showed up on what was it may 3rd 1838 when the temple was built or 36 when the temple was built and he restored the ceiling power so again some search questions who's the prophet in chapter 17 why do you think he asked a widow to take care of him 
who was virtually destitute herself. When have you felt the sealing power in your life? What can you do to prepare to be sealed in the temple for time and all eternity? Okay, I just asked four questions, one from each category. Those four questions could take an entire class, right? Especially if everyone wrote about them and then verbally shared what some of their answers were. And there's deep, they're not just surface level. Maybe the first one was, but you can go in there. So here's your practice. You're all in First Kings chapter 17. Let's go down to where uh, he raises the widow's son from death. That's the last few verses. She asked him, verse 21, he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come unto him again. Verse 22, and the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. Verse 24. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art a man of God, and that the word of the Lord in thy mouth is truth. Okay, just in those verses, you know the story now. Again, it doesn't take long to tell the story. In my experience, too many teachers in Relay Society, Sunday School, Elders Quorum, Young Men's, Young Women's Seminary Institute spend more time on the story and less time on the more important parts. Story should go quick. It doesn't take long to get that story down, right? Some stories a little longer. Some stories they already know. You can just take 30 seconds and review it. But if that's the story, let's do this. Uh, what could be an effective search question? I'm not looking for anything specific. You tell me. What's a good search question? Who, what, where, when, why? Not an analyze or invite question. I'm talking a searching the scriptures. I want information question. Okay, I'm leaving this up on the screen, but I can see you now. So wave, raise your hand, and uh, we'll let you share. Someone share. What's a search question? Uh, Julie. You're muted. Wrong screen. How many times did he pray? Oh, excellent. Love that. Somebody else want to give a, a search question? Nobody? I would say maybe in verse 22, who's Elijah listening to? Simple question, right? Now, the search questions are only preliminary questions to get to that which is more important. Now I want an analyze question. I want thinking about the meaning. Analyzing. Someone want to give us a share and analyze question with this story. Okay, is that Joy, you're up. Maybe something about um, what do you think when he said see thy son liveth what what was the power that brought that son to life I, what kind of i guess to me correlating that to what brings spiritual life to us interesting so you took it one way i was thinking you were saying it's a priesthood blessing here right an analyzed question is we don't lie Wait. down on somebody to give them a priesthood blessing that's just how he did it um, maybe an analyzing is why do we use oil in a priesthood blessing today? That's I, not a great question, but that's a good one for right now. Someone else, what's a good analyze question? Julie. You're muted. Why did it, why did he do this three times? Why didn't, why wasn't once enough? That's a good question. And there's not a right or wrong answer. We may not even know the answer, right? But there might be some thoughts. Diana. What did the mother have to do in, in order for this to occur? Now that is a great question. 
because it was her request, right? So here was, if someone's faithful, wants something done, what do they need to do to have that faith acted upon? That's a great question. Love it. Someone else, what's another good analyzing question? Look at verse 24. Someone come up with a good analyzed question in verse 24. Okay, Joy. Maybe when you think of spiritual experiences like that, um, teach us uh, that the word of the Lord is in the mouth of our prophets or, or a priesthood holder. What, what effect do those experiences have on our building our faith? Oh, I love that. Uh, Shannon just put in the chat here too. Why do you think the widow bore her testimony? In verse 24. Okay, great. Now let's make sure we bring in the Savior into this conversation because we could do this entire story and talk about faith and everything and leave the Savior out. So let's bring him in. Can someone bring in a question that would invite the Savior in the center of this conversation? For example, Diana's question, I think you could bring in the Savior to that question. Diana, think about how you can bring the Savior into your question. Because you asked, what, what did the widow have to do? I, I, I think the analyze questions, or no, not analyze, um, the apply questions could really get into really bringing the Savior in. Um, so, so, yes, does this remind you... Uh, what's however, does this remind you of a time in in the Savior's life or in your life where you felt the the Spirit very strongly? Okay, that's a yes or no question. Make it so they have to answer it. What time? Uh, so, um, yeah. Okay. You're doing good. I love it. What time? Think of times in your life where you felt the Spirit strongly, and how has that changed your life? Oh, there you go. Now, do you see the process? I'm picking on Diana because I know her very well and she's great with this. Uh, do you see the process? As a teacher, you read a scripture block and sometimes we're like, how am I going to teach this? What am I going to do? We need to switch that to what Elder Bender said. What do my students need to be asking and answering? And then the lessons are taught by the Holy Ghost, not us. All I have to do is come up with some questions. And these questions can be tweaked and fine-tuned. In fact, practice the question. If you're married, turn to a spouse and say, here's a question I'm going to ask you. And maybe they can help you make it better. Or ask another teacher. Or ask a class president. Say, this is the question I'm going to ask in class today. Is there a better way to ask this question? Uh, I saw some hands up. Let's, uh, Julie and then Leah. Unmute, Julie. Yeah. Um, I was looking at verse 22, where it says that the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. And I was thinking, you could do a whole lesson on, on hearing the Lord. I mean, how do you know that the Lord has heard you? Yeah, that question. Does alone. he hear prophets <laughs> louder than us? I mean, Elijah had to ask three times. That's a great question. When have you heard the voice of the Lord in your life? Or how is the Lord or how is the Savior speak to us today? It's a great question. Well, and how do you have, says that the Lord heard the voice of Elijah. How do you have confidence that the Lord has heard you? Love that. Leah, you had a great comment. Um, I was just thinking in that same training by Elder Bednar, he, he always goes back to this question of what are you hearing that hasn't been shared? Love it. You know, after, after we think the conversation's done, before he moves on in his training, he always says, what are you hearing that hasn't been shared? That, and that is a general <clears throat> question that could be asked at any lesson. For any anything. scripture ball. Love it. 
Okay, for those of you, let's we're going to sum up and come to a conclusion now. Uh, there's some great comments in the chat. Feel free to read those. I just put in the, the PDF again if someone came late and they didn't get the, that before and or it was on the screen. Or if you really can't get it, talk to your coordinator. Say, hey, there was a, a chart. I literally have this chart printed and I put it on my wall here. And when I'm preparing lessons, I read the scripture block, make sure I understand the stories. I read it again to say, okay, what doctrines or principles are in this? And I make a list of doctrines or principles. And then I pray, okay, Heavenly Father, what doctrine or principles do we need to make sure are really covered? Because they're not all equivalent. And every class might need a different one, right? Your class might need this principle. My class might need that one. And then I come up with a list of questions that I think would help my students invite the Spirit in to teach them. And sometimes they write them, sometimes they share them, sometimes I put them in small groups and have them discuss the questions. Sometimes I'll print out a piece of paper. That's what I'm working on right now. Actually, for this week, I'm printing a little piece of paper that has several questions on it, and they're getting in a group and they're answering those questions. Sometimes they do it by themselves. And then I have a little summary. Okay, let's answer. Uh, read, your, read, read the questions. Effective questioning will teach far more than whatever I could teach because the Spirit is answering and asking and redirecting those questions. And I leave you that as my testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's have a closing prayer. And then if you want to stick on for a few more minutes, you're more than welcome to. And I'll put that back up on the screen if someone else still wants to take a screenshot of it. Do I have a volunteer to say our closing prayer? I'd be happy to. Leah, please. Oh. Sister Green, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was going to also ask when, can you tell us where the recordings of these are? Yes, I will put that link in the chat here as well. Thank well, you. Let's pray first and then I'll go ahead and yep. put that in the chat. Dear Heavenly Father, we're grateful that we could meet for this um, training this morning with Brother Griffith and with <clears throat> the other um, institute and seminary teachers and pray that we can have uh, thy spirit with us in these trainings that we can learn from each other and that we'll hear the promptings and inspiration that thou hast for us. And this we say in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Thank you for the beautiful prayer. Okay, I will put, let me find it in here. It's in YouTube. I'm going to see if I can do a search. So then I can tell you the search for those of you who can't access the link and those who are watching the recording. I'm doing a search for Southeast Seminary. I don't know. I, I may be, the, it may just be because I'm on my phone, but I cannot actually see your attachments in the chat. So I will, I'll have to get on, I guess, another time and get it. Okay. Yeah. Phones always do things a little bit different. Give me a second. I have to find it. I should have pulled this up earlier because that's a really good question to have. Okay, I think it's under S and I, that's the letter S, the and sign, the letter I, space, southeast, one word, space, area. And that's on YouTube? That's a YouTube. Yeah, go to YouTube and then do a search for S and I, southeast, area. And... There's one in there on this one. I added mine last week and I don't see it. So maybe I didn't add it right. Not the first time I failed at technology. So I'll see what I can do to fix that. And then I'll add this one to it. So SNI Southeast area, and it should be accessible in there. I'll make sure these last two are in there. Okay. Thank you.